Hey friends, welcome to the Publish, Promote, Profit podcast. I'm Rob Kosberg, and every week I show you how to use a best-selling book to grow your income and your impact. And if you're interested in having your own best-selling book, I recorded a short video explaining our trademarked process at beginmybook.com. Hey everybody, Rob here uh, for our uh, bestseller publishing university call. Good to see you all. Uh, I was actually out of town all week and back, but you probably didn't even know that. So here I am, uh, glad to be with you. And uh, I'm a little bit afraid that uh, you're going to be slightly disappointed with me today uh, because my, though my title and my headline is quite attractive, How to Sell Tons of Books, which I'm going to be very, very honest with you and tell you exactly what you need to do it. But I think there may be a little bit of disappointment because of what it's going to take and also how it may distract you from your ideal focus and purpose. And yes, St. Augustine was awesome, Eddie, thanks. <laughs> um, also went down to Southwest Florida to visit my wife's uh, ailing parents, and uh, that was one of the main purposes of the trip. So, uh, but thank you for asking. So uh, what is it that, um, that we wanna focus on? You know, I tell this to my authors all the time. Um, if you're going to sell something, if you're going to sell your book, then you're going to have to focus on making sure that you're doing the necessary things to actually get that book to sell. If you're doing that, then most certainly you're taking your focus off of, you know, what could be a more profitable proposition, selling something more expensive. However, I know every author is thinking they want, you want, I want to sell as many of our books as possible because obviously if we sell a whole bunch of them, they're going to get into the hands of people. They're going to love it or most of them are going to love it. And that could potentially lead to other opportunities as well. And all that is true. I was, uh, I was on YouTube uh, while I was traveling last week, just in the mornings, you know, uh, watching some various YouTube videos, and I, I came across a few different videos from Jordan Peterson. I, I read his book, 12 Rules for Life, really great book, um, no matter what you think of some of the things that, he's, that he uh, discusses or, or whatnot. I know he can be uh, slightly controversial, maybe slightly is an understatement, but, um, but his book is really intriguing, and uh, he's a really, really smart man, powerful, uh, powerful speaker and communicator. And I was watching several videos kind of in conjunction with, with his book, and I was just taken back at how many videos there were of Jordan Peterson on different media, doing all kinds of different PR and media, selling his book. Now, his book is sold, at least at that time, it was something like 2 million copies. It's done really well. It's made him, you know, pretty, pretty rich, pretty well off, especially because he's now a you know, more than ever a, a, a public figure and is being asked to speak and being paid large speaking fees and all those kinds of things. But I was just impacted by the number of presentations that I found on the media of Jordan Peters, Peterson in major media selling his book. And I thought, you know, this is a, I think, a good conversation for us to have because Jordan Peterson is a pretty well-known figure, and he was a pretty well-known figure before 12 Rules for Life came out. And yet, here he is appearing on media five, six, seven times a week, and major media, like the Joe Rogan podcast, multiple times. Uh, all kinds of uh, top media in New Zealand, in the UK, in Australia, all over the United States. And you wonder, well, how does someone like Jordan Peterson sell so many books? And I'll tell you, it's, it's not just because he's pretty well known and has a big YouTube following, and he does have a massive YouTube following of over a million people. It's because he is hustling to sell his book. Now, here's the interesting thing. He doesn't have anything else to sell. He's not selling a course or a program. He's not selling some type of coaching or consulting on the back end. And really, most of the speaking that he's done has been as a college professor although now he's starting to get larger speaking fees and offers for that just as an ancillary to what has happened with the success of his book. Not having something to sell on the back end is fine for someone like Jordan Peterson, but it's not fine for you and I because we can focus our attention either 
on selling something for $20 or selling something for $200, $2,000, or $20,000. You know what my feelings are about that. However, because I've shared with you that the title of this is how to sell tons of books, and then I said dot, 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 warning, you may not choose to actually do that. Let me share with you what needs to happen. There are two or three primary things that you need to focus on in the selling of your book. Once everything's done with the launch of your book, whether it's you're using um, bestseller publishing to do the launch of the book, or whether you're learning how to do it from us and, and putting these things into practice yourself, once the launch of the book is completed and the book has initially uh, received some, some good acclaim and success, you then will have to pick up the mantle of selling your book, just like someone like Jordan Peterson, as famous as he is, has to appear on media day after day after day after day in different cities and in different countries to get his book sold. You will also have to work that diligently and that hard to get your book sold as well, because if someone that famous has to, then guess what? Well, you and I will have to do that as well. So here are the ways that you're going to do that. My number one favorite way for you to get your book sold is speaking engagements. Now, if you don't like to um, public speak, then obviously you can discount this as a suggestion, but I find most authors are interested in doing some public speaking. When it comes to public speaking, depending on the amount of fame that you already have, public speaking might be as simple as uh, a local networking type event, uh, because those are happening by the, by the bushel uh, in every single city across the country every single week. And it may be as small as 10, 15, 20. It may be as large uh, like Christy, yours is uh, 200 or so that happens every Friday. So it could be some type of networking event that you do. It could also be something that happens on a monthly uh, type basis like a a Rotary or Lions Club or something that has guest speakers come in. It could be some type of entrepreneurial uh, focused group like a networking um, uh, type group here in Southern California. There's groups like Provisors that uh, does, uh, you know, many, many events every single week all throughout the Southern California area. And I'm sure you have those things as well. BNI is one that is also all over the country. So it could be as small as that to larger. And I always suggest, and I've done a whole training, I don't have time to do it now, but I've done a whole training on how you target, find, target, and then reach out to opportunities for speaking engagements. I'll refer you to that training in our uh, membership area if you haven't already seen it. Otherwise, know that that's kind of the lowest tier. The lowest tier are your local networking events. Lowest tier meaning they're small and they tend to be very um, unfocused, meaning that, you know, I could probably go and speak to a number of local networking events, but how many people within that local networking event are really going to write a book? So I would really rather speak to a, a group of people. I'd rather speak to 100 people that are all interested in writing a book than 1,000 people who may or may not be interested in writing a book. So I really prefer a very, very narrow focus when it comes to a speaking engagement. So that lowest tier when it comes to speaking are your referral type or, or your local networking events because you don't know who's there. You don't know if they're a potential buyer of your book or a potential client for you. You don't know that. However, as you go up, and again, um, I'm referring back to the training I did on speaking engagements, as you go up to what I call tier two, tier one, uh, these are uh, much more narrowly focused. They could be events directly in your niche. They could be events, if you're a doctor, they could be events for medical professionals specifically. And those happen on the county level, the state level, the national level, and there are literally 60,000 of them in the United States alone that happen every single year. So you have to get on those people's radar using your book and then get in front of them. When you do that, you're gonna have an opportunity to sell your book because you're in front of them as a speaker and because your book is for sale at the back of the room. What you'll also have an opportunity to do is if you do speak to a large convention or even a modest sized convention, you can have 
the person that is setting up this opportunity for you to speak, in lieu of maybe a speaker fee, have them purchase a certain number of your books. If you sell your book for $25 retail on Amazon and you offer the uh, convention promoter an opportunity to buy your books at $15 or $20, still a discount from retail, but in lieu of a speaking fee, well, you might be able to sell $5,000 worth of books. They feel great because they're getting something in exchange for you being the speaker. You feel great because you're still making four or 5,000 bucks because you can print this for three bucks if you sell it for 20, which is still lower than retail, then you're making almost the entire spread. You're making $17 per book that's sold. You sell two or 300 of those, and it's a nice $5,000 or more paycheck. If you can sell even more than that, if it's a large conference, then guess what? You can now make into the five figures for one speaking engagement just by selling your book. Not too bad, right? Fantastic. And oh, by the way, there are still ancillary benefits and opportunities because you're gonna get your book into those people's hands. If they're your potential ideal clients, then guess what? Hopefully they're gonna reach out to you. Now, you know what my thinking and feeling is about this. When it comes to speaking engagements, I like to speak in front of a room. I like to even give my book away for free in exchange for their contact information. Meaning I want the information of my ideal client. I want their name, I want their telephone number, I want their address, I want all those things so that I can follow up with them and hopefully sell them something because they have that need that's much more valuable to both them and me than a $20 book. There's a risk involved because I'm not getting a five or $10,000 paycheck to do that, but I'm hoping and expecting to get a 20, 25, or even six figure paycheck on the back end by generating leads. However, if you want to sell a ton of your books, then guess what? You need to do a ton of speaking engagements because if you, if you speak on the local, on the state, on the national level, and there oftentimes is a growth curve, right? You don't start speaking to the largest stages. Often you start speaking to the smaller ones. But if you do that consistently, you can easily, easily sell tens of thousands of dollars worth of books every single year and perhaps even six figures in books. I have several clients that do that. So that's number one. Speaking is my favorite and it's the best way for you to do it. And you absolutely should do it. If you don't have anything else to sell but your book, this is a way that you can sell your book and make six figures selling your book just by going to speaking engagements. Now you have to be a good order. You have to have a compelling message. All of those things go without saying. Number two, you need to and should follow in Jordan Peterson's footsteps and any, by the way, successful author. And what is that? You should appear on media and do PR and media on a regular basis. Uh, and that is everything from podcast to print to blogs and of course, radio and television and radio and television are great if you have more of a mass appeal, right? Uh, when I was on uh, KTLA for my book just a few months ago, this does not have, honestly, in my opinion, a great mass appeal. However, just through the mention of it, 50 or 60 of the books sold in just my three to five minute uh, segment, right? So nothing wrong with that. Now, that wasn't my main purpose for doing that media. However, if I were to do media three or four or five times a week, guess what? I may be able to sell 250 to 300 copies of my book just from modest media appearances on a regular basis. I just did a five-week media training. I laid out all the specifics to you guys, my clients, on how to get media. If you put that into practice on a regular basis, then you can get as much media as you like and have an opportunity to sell your book. Some media, no one may buy your book. Others, it may be two or three or four or five or six or seven people sell your book. Sometimes you hit a big media uh, burst you hit a big podcast and you may sell hundreds of copies of your book. Now you also know what I do. I generally speaking, don't sell my book. What I do is I send people through to my free plus shipping funnel because what I would really prefer to do rather than make money on the front of this book is I would like people that really want a copy of this book who are my ideal clients and I want to get them into my world and start communicating with those people, building a relationship with them and see if I can help them and sell them something that's a higher investment down the road. If you don't have that, then guess what? Your opportunity is to sell your book and you should be doing that. So speaking engagements, media and PR, 
by far the two biggest ones. And these are things you should be doing. As you know, Bestseller Publishing does this on a done-for-you basis for our clients. However, generally speaking, we don't do it on an ongoing basis. We do a big book launch for you to make your book successful, and I suggest you do that. But after our book launch is over, after all the paid ads are spent, after the media, the, the, the uh, press releases are done, after the social media is completed, then guess what? Your book will fall off the cliff because you've got to then take the mantle up and continue the marketing and selling of your book, just like a famous person like Jordan Peterson did. You will have to do that as well. Same with speaking engagements. Media and PR, same kind of thing. Generally, our clients pay us to do a segment of media and PR for them, but not on an ongoing basis. We really want to hand the baton off to you and say, now go get them, you know, continue being on media and PR if that's what you want, or sell your products and services using your book just like we teach you to do. Let me give you a third and much more hands-off way that I think you might be interested in. And we started using this probably six or eight months ago. I've used it on and off um, with some success, but I've really liked what I've, I've seen, uh, especially in the last six or eight months, and that's Amazon ads for authors, Amazon ads. So we don't make any money uh, on our Amazon ads, but... Um, I am selling maybe a thousand to fifteen hundred dollars worth of my books online through Amazon advertising every single month. Now, if I'm not making any money, someone's going to say, "Well, Rob, why would you do it?" Because I'm not losing any money. It's about a break-even proposition, and what it means is I'm getting dozens, even hundreds of copies of my book into people's hands, and it's not costing me a single dime to do it. So people then will come into my world, they'll read my stuff, they'll opt in perhaps to other things that I'm doing, maybe they'll become a client of mine in another way. So that Amazon advertising is something that you should look uh, into. I will spend more time in discussion, I'll even do a, a screen share and show you all of my ad setup and all of that. Uh, I don't have time to do it right at the moment, it's really something that uh, needs its own uh, BSPU segment. So, but those three things are what you need to focus on to get your book sold. And if you want your book to continue selling, yes, organic sales will happen. And those are fantastic. But if you want to sell tons of books, then you have to think in terms of getting it in front of the right people. And that's going to be media and PR on a regular basis. And that's going to be speaking engagements. Amazon ads are a great kind of hands-free way for you to do it. And if you add these things in with perhaps the, you, you get some, not just initial success from us, but you get some ongoing success, then guess what? Bookstores are going to want to pick up your book. And I've, I've been asked many times, well, Rob, what about Hudson's? What about Barnes & Noble, et cetera? They want books that sell. So if you can show them that your book is doing well, that your book has done well, you reach out to them, then guess what? You'll be able to get your book in those bookstores and you'll be able to get your book in front of more people that way. That's not a suggestion for you to do right out of the gate. That's especially if you're self-publishing and you're, you're going down the, the route that we teach or that we're doing for you. However, if you show some initial success, like through our launch, and then some ongoing success, then all these bookstores are going to be interested in you. Now, with that said, I don't know when the last time you actually bought a book in a bookstore. It's been a long time for me. Uh, most of my books, and I purchase books three to five times a week, it seems like. They're almost always done through Amazon. So I don't want you to think that the answer to all of your challenges and problems in book sales is to get your book into Hudson's. It doesn't work that way. It's a temporary window. It's a temporary time frame. Oftentimes, it's more about ego, how the author feels, actually seeing their book in there. However, I want to give you as many opportunities to sell your book as possible. Nothing is going to be better than speaking. That's number one. You'll sell more books speaking than anything. Number two, PR and media, absolutely awesome. Amazon ads are fantastic, especially because they have a hands-off component. And then last but not least, once all of that has been put into place, you have an opportunity maybe to get your book into bookstores. And when you do that, yes, people will stumble upon it and will buy it. And hey, who doesn't like when something like that happens? So those are four ways 
that you and guess what? Other successful authors are doing it. It's what Jordan Peterson is doing. He's selling his book through speaking. He's selling it through massive PR that he's doing. I imagine he's using Amazon advertising. I don't know, but I imagine that he did at least at some point and certainly through bookstores. You will have to do the same thing. Now, let me tell you one more thing before we kind of cut this. I said, here's how you're going to sell tons of books. And I also said in the beginning, you may not be happy with the answer uh, to that actual question. How do you do it? And that is that you have to work. Like it's going to take a lot of work. You have to focus on it and an ongoing basis. Because if you want it selling six months from now, then sure, you'll get a few organic sales here and there, maybe even a good number, but you won't get near as many as if you really put your time and focus and attention into it. So the big question you have to ask yourself is, is that the best use of your time? Is that the best use of your energy and your focus? I shared with you just a couple of weeks ago, a way that you can start a consulting business from zero, from nothing, from scratch, just an idea, and go to over a quarter of a million dollars very easily if you have a simple $3,000 front-end product and a $10,000 back-end product, which are at the lowest levels after using your book. If you focus and you put your attention on something like that, then you can get to a quarter of a million dollars or higher using your book to generate leads, generate authority, generate sales much easier than you could ever earn $250,000 in selling copies of your book. So you'll have to think, think and figure out, Rob, what is the best way for me? You have to answer to yourself, what is the best way for me to make money and to make an impact at the same time, an income and an impact? Maybe in your situation, it's as simple as getting your book sold and you want to do speaking engagements and you want to get into people's hands and you don't have anything beyond that to sell. Great. No problem. You know what you need to do. If on the other hand, you can create something beyond the book or you have something beyond the book, then guess what? You're going to be in a lot better shape focusing on that rather than focusing on the book. Start with focusing on the book initially, get the book to bestseller, you know, get the book to legitimate, credible authority, you as the best-selling author. But then after that, I take my focus off the book and I put my focus on the back end. I want to get this book into people's hands just because I really want to get people involved in bestseller publishing and all the things we do. Hey, thanks for listening in on the Publish, Promote, Profit podcast. If you enjoyed it, please take a minute and like and subscribe to the podcast because every week I bring you either great guests or great teaching to help you to grow your income and your impact with a best-selling book. And if you're interested in having your own best-selling book, check out my short video which explains our trademark process at beginmybook.com.